Hello, hello, hello! You're returning to another episode of The Wonder Kid Show. Today's first topic. Oh! I'm starting off with a slap. Why am I starting off with a slap? Nick Wright makes his proper top 10 in the NFL. Look! I told you yesterday I was going to cover this. So I had to start this off with a slap. And I just want to make sure that all of you understand that I truly do feel how I'm telling you guys. This is not for clicks, anything else. Like, this guy, Nick Wright, truly bothers me. And matter of fact, I think he's a liar. And I think that's why his nose keeps growing. I'm a real boy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play what he had to say about his top five. And then I'm going to tell you what his top 20 was, right? And then we're going to break it down, all right? So without further ado, I'm not even going to waste time. Let's watch this foolishness. Number 10, the 10th best player in the league, Tyree Kill. I mean, the the 10th 10th best player in the league. Back-to-back years, he's been almost identical. He had 170 oh. targets and then 171 targets. He had 119 catches and then 119 catches. This is because he left the Chiefs. He's mad about he's that. 100, he's averaged 100 yards per game or more in each of those two seasons. He is, in my opinion, a top two receiver and a top ten player and an absolute game breaker. Number 10? He's the 10th best player in the sport. Are we allowed to interrupt here? Sure, or do whatever you want. He was number one. and He's, he's, he's number one where? The NFL that gazy list? Who cares? Well, and then he started to tweet us and well, tweet I don't know. you, and I came to your defense. Again, I, I'm i giving him respect. I haven't had a Jamar Chase. I haven't had a CeeDee Lamb. I, I'm not taking everyone on what? this list. What? What's, gosh darn it. What's he said he's not played better than three. Okay, okay, 32. whatever. It's like 1,750. No, 1,750 guys. Check it out. I bet it's close. It's like 1,700 plus players in the league. I have Top 10. 10. Second in season. Number nine. Thank you. Wow. TJ Watt. In the last four years, the Pittsburgh Steelers are 39-19-1 when he plays. They are 1-10 when he doesn't. Mm. I'm not a quarterback wins guy, so I'm certainly not an edge rusher wins guy, but that is compelling. Something. And the his ability to impact the game. He's nice. I ain't gonna lie. The quarterback through she did super stats nice. as far as sacks and all of that, but then also the more, I don't want to say advanced stats, but pressures and things like that. I'm not... He, he changes the way the Steelers Would run. Would you take T.J. Watt over Tyreek? Chris Jones. He is now that Aaron Donald is gone, the consensus best D tackle in football. He has found a way in each of the past You're not two years Jones to play over his absolute Hill. best football Stop in the absolute biggest moments. You're not. He changes the math on how you have to block the Chiefs edges because a lot of teams you have to double the edge for the Chiefs you must double him and then on big passing downs they put him out on the edge and he affects the game Chris Jones comes in number eight his teammate Travis Kelsey comes in number seven in the last five years when the Chiefs have won three Super Bowls in those playoff runs he averages 92 yards per game he has 17 touchdowns in 16 playoff games and he catches 84% 84% of the balls thrown his way. Wow. He is number one in the NFL all-time list in playoff yards per game and playoff uh, catches, and he is number two on the all-time list in playoff touchdowns and playoff yards. That's not amongst tight ends. That's listen, amongst I, all I like, players. I like Kel- listen, I like Kelsey. I think he's the top ten easily. I understand how he's not. So he is. He's up there. In the final three games of the postseason, he caught the five games he played with Christian McCaffrey. He, he has now, he has since he's been in San opinion he pretty i think he's elevated brock Purdy to mvp contender he is in the super bowl 80 yards rushing 80 yards receiving he is a do-it-all back who is the most valuable weapon out of the backfield in the nfl he's number six mm-hmm. number five the most disrespected man on the nfl top 100 joe burrow he wasn't in the top oh. 30 in the nfl top 100 when he's healthy they win when he's healthy, he puts up numbers, he distributes the ball. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When he's healthy? Wasn't that your discourse against when Lamar was injured? Oh, the truth! On top of it, when Lamar's healthy, 
he beats down Joe Burrow. Matter of fact, I don't even watch no more of this crap, right? Number four is, is uh, uh, what's his name from the Browns, the pass rusher, right? Miles Garrett. Number three is Jettis. Number two, he got um, the left tackle for uh, San Francisco. And then number one, of course, you already know is Patrick Mahomes. Now, <clears throat> I'm fair in all my evaluation when I do things, right? This is what he said his second is. Right? So, you know, the right under the top 10, just missed the top 10. He got Josh Allen, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, B. John Robinson. Oh. He said B. John Robinson. Uh, Penny Suell, Crosby, Michael Parsons, Warner. That's Warner from um the, the linebacker from the, uh what's it called, from San Francisco. Sauce Gardner and our Hamilton from the Baltimore Ravens. Do you know who's missing out of that? I'll tell you who's missing out of that. The reigning MVP is missing out of that. Oh! He said that every, there's 20 players he would pick over Lamar Jackson. Stop oh! lying. None of them were better than him. You oh! know the truth. The man's a two-time MVP. Two-time. You're telling me you'd pick B. John Robinson over him? Hey, yo! Bro, I, listen, I, 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 this guy really does bother me. <laughs> I'm a real boy. <laughs> oh, that's all he is. He's Pinocchio. You know, I'm not even calling him Nick right no more. You Pinocchio. Listen, Pinocchio really bothers me, bro. Really bothers me. Because it's so disingenuous. You're going to put a guy, a, a, a second-year running back, over the reigning MVP. That's your... This guy is trying to be such a hard troll. And I'm telling y'all this. What bothers me with the way he trolls and what all these guys do, because if you're wrong, you're wrong, right? You get proven wrong. He is just going to pivot. When Lamar wins the title, when the Baltimore Ravens hoist the Lombardi trophy, all he's going to say is going to be like, well, I know he won and stuff like that, but I'd still choose Joe Burrow. That's what he's going to say. I'm going to play. Last bit I'm going to play is his belief and why he's allowed to, you know, argue the Lamar thing like he does. Quick listen. I think it's about two minutes. Check this out. I don't want to remove anyone from this top ten list. Right, that would because be uh, yeah. conviction. I don't want Jesus. to. Exactly. If I had to, gonna make it a if I had to take a quarterback off, uh -huh. I might take Joe Burrow, who was hurt not once but twice, and he actually played early on and was horrible. <laughs> And I think he was the worst quarterback in the league statistically the when he was playing game. through the injury. Then he had a stretch there where he was the best quarterback yeah. in the league. Then he showed up with a mysterious wrist injury, and then he sat out. Meanwhile, Lamar Jackson uh, just kept on winning his regular season yeah, games. When he plays crazy. against Joe Burrow, he beats him. I think he's 4-1 and one against Joe Burrow. Jo and remember, his point is that, oh, when Joe Burrow's healthy, they win games and stuff like that. When it's like Lamar beats him, he's only lost to Joe Burrow once. Lamar absolutely makes child uh, uh, child play out of the uh, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, and he wins, and he's had the best record in the league twice. Like, where do we in the hardest division in football? But I continue. Check me on that, and had another MVP. Now, did he show up in the playoff game? He didn't play as well as probably he could have. But I don't know what the argument is that all of a sudden Joe Burrow is better than the two-time defending MVP. And if we go to the honorable mention I was gonna section, say, he's not even an honorable he mention. Make the honorable mention. He's not even an honorable mention. You know what I might do as a segment, just to have a brainstorm on the, on the, on the air? I might have a Lamar Jackson board. Yeah, that, I'm going to talk to Kay about ordering us another bulletin board. Purple. And that's all I'm going to play for that, right? Disrespectful. So you don't have... You know what the funny thing about this is? He knows. You see... He knows that the player who can dethrone Patrick Mahomes if he ever breaks through is Lamar Jackson. He's the only one that has had the best record in the league since Pat's been in there. He's the only one that's been an MVP out of the young guys since Pat's been in there. He's made it to an AFC championship game, right? Injury and poor team building. Poor team building, injuries, and coaching has been the detriment of this team. It, it, it's not, you can't even argue it at this point. You can't even argue it. It's an arduous 
argument. Because make no mistake about it. Make no mistake. The Ravens came out and said they have not built the team around Lamar the right way. So don't take my word for it. He hasn't had the weapons. He hasn't had the pass-happy offense. I brought that up in another video. I said Patrick Mahomes is in a QB's dream uh, 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 system, right? The dream system for a QB is, is Andy Reid. I, I, you can make any excuse you want. Go down the line of every quarterback Andy Reid has ever had. Look at them when he had them. Look at when he didn't have them. Their best seasons came with them. He's the reason why Cass, uh, Castle got uh, Cassell, whatever his name was. Uh, 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 what's it called? Did okay, and then he had the big drop off. He's the Alex Smith's best season. Why? Think about it. Think about it. He was doing the check down king. Man, best two seasons came out of that place. Top three offense. Last night, you saw them flinging the ball around the field without Patrick Mahomes on the field. Andy Reid gets players open. It is a pass-friendly offense. Just like how Christian McCaffrey is in a run-friendly offense. Offense under Kyle Shanahan and Tyreek Hill's in a receiver happy system with whatever his name is in, uh, in Miami. <laughs> like Lamar has not had that yet, and when he does get that, you're gonna make the excuse like, "Oh, he needs this system to be to be a uh, 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 successful." How you gonna say? There's no other player that we can lean on on this team if Lamar is playing bad. There's none. We've seen Pat play bad, right? They can lean on play call. They can lean on defense. They can lean on uh, Travis Kelsey just getting open. Name the other player we can lean on that's not Lamar Jackson on the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, I'm sorry. You can lean on our kicker who has missed, uh, 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 what's it called? Who has missed uh, uh, more, what was it called? More kicks in the past two years than he has in, his, in, in like his first six or seven years in the NFL. Like, come on now, bro. And that's no, that's no hate to just talk. I'm being real. People like forget in the Bills game, he missed like two kicks. He missed the kick in the Kansas City Chiefs game. Like people forget these things. It like goes over their head. And he's the GOAT. Like he has horns on his forehead. Might mistake you for a cherubim. So I just I just don't understand the mindset of how you can be so disrespectful to a player and then you and this is what I'm trying to say you diminish everything he's accomplished while uplifting guys that don't have half of what he has. It doesn't make sense. Why am I even arguing? Oh my god. I'm a real boy. Oh. Yours. I'm a real boy. I'm a this man feeling himself. He's lucky, bro. I would demit yo, I would demolish this man if we were face to face. Face to face. Having to argue a, 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 a situation. I have to argue this topic. We, I, I would absolutely destroy him. Because he would not be able to stand. How are you going to say Joe Burrow wins when he's not hurt and stuff like that? He wins games, they make the playoffs, and it's like Lamar's been making the playoffs in his rookie season. The only time Joe Burrow has won the AFC North is when Lamar has been hurt. You held Lamar's injuries against him. Joe Burrow came back from one injury, right? Uh, 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 did what he did. Two seasons, Lamar was hurt. Comes back, plays like trash. Y'all blame it on injury. Then he gets re-injured again. And then you're like, oh, but he's still top two. Yeah. Yo, bruh. I can't wait till Lamar wins because I'm going to be insufferable. I swear to God, I'm going to be insufferable. I'm going to be the type of person where y'all going to be like, I don't want to listen to Nitro no more because he's just going, He's. it's like it's like he's, he has a vendetta. I think, <laughs> not even an honorable man. You don't have him top 20. The reigning MVP is not a top 20 player in the league. And he's a two-time MVP. 
Hold on, worry. The pivoting is coming. Him, Ryan, Cl all of them are going to be pivoting. Oh, 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 oh. I'm telling y'all, watch. It's just, like I said before, this is why I support Lamar the way I support Lamar because it's, it's, they know that if they disrespect him, people are going to tune into their shows. So they just disrespect him. That's what they do. They're like, oh, we're just going to disrespect you. And you just got to take it because that's, that's, that's TV. That's what we do. We're trying to feed our families over here. It's like you discredit, like the media shapes how the masses view you. That's why the media is so dangerous and so powerful. The media can shape how you think on, a, on numerous subjects. Eventually, if you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, you start to believe it. That's the power of the media. Suggestion. Suggestion. Ugh, sorry. You understand? It's the power of suggestion. That's what it is. So I'm looking at this saying, y'all are coming out here and don't, don't want the man to be mad about you degrading everything that he's done in the conference in the NFL, right? We keep getting closer every single year. And when we win one, you're going to say, you never said what you said. I'm, listen, what Mark, you see Mad Dog, Nick, and all of them, this is just because they never liked Lamar. All they're going to do is they're going to say, well, we'll still pick Joe Burrow. I mean, he doesn't want a Super Bowl, but he's came close. He doesn't have the MVPs, but I mean, because the MVPs become, you know, not what we once thought it was. They're going to try to diminish everything he's done, even the Super Bowl. Even the Super Bowl. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, they're making it seem like, oh, oh we could go at him like the way we do because he hasn't won a Super Bowl. Your other crap guys haven't won a Super Bowl, MVP, won the best record in the league. None of those things. Hasn't, hasn't led the league and passed the touchdown. None of those things. And they have the weapons that Baltimore Ravens fans dream about. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pinocchio, Pinocchio, Pinocchio. But what do you guys think? Are you tired of Pinocchio, a.k.a. Nick Wright, from First Things First? Like I am, are you tired of his lies and his skewing of the truth to fit his narrative? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Matter of fact, power! Oh, I need more power! Across the screen, slap! Oh, you want it! I need, listen, I'm sorry, man. You lucky, boy. You lucky. I gotta go to Sunday dinner, boy. You lucky, boy. Pinocchio, you lucky. Because I knows you know. <laughs> if you don't knows, now you knows. You know what I'm saying? But let me know what you think down in the comment section, all right? But as always, <gasps> that's an episode of the Wonder King Show! <laughs> Thank you for watching. Y'all know how we get down. We have fun and we laugh. But everything we talk about rooted in what? Facts and truth. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment. You know I love the comments. If you have not done so already, check out the Wonder King Show's Patreon. Yes, three tiers of content goodness waiting for your consumption. Give it a look, give it a try. Let me know what you think. And if you'd like to donate to this channel, help out with equipment and such stuff like that, bottom of the screen, QR code, QR codes to a cash app. Cash is located in the description of every video that we do. Name of it is Money Sign, The Wonderkin Show. Super easy. But once again, The Wonderkin Show, this is your host, Dr. Sending Off, and as always, you know my slogan, <gasps> peace. And I am out of here, huh? Yeah! Finish him, Daddy. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah!